Hello and welcome to Tech Deals X299. What is it? Who should buy it? Which motherboard should you buy? Which CPU should you buy? How does it compare to the X399 Threadripper boards? And who should step up to the high-end enthusiast desktop versus the consumer level platforms of Ryzen 7 and the i5 and i7 from Intel? X299 is the new high-end enthusiast desktop platform from Intel replacing the X99 or Broadwell E platform from last year. It is not meant to be a general consumer platform, although it works for that. It's primarily for people who are either extreme enthusiasts and want the best of everything. It's for people who do content creation, run virtual machines, software development, scientific applications. Perhaps you're running a, a lot of different things on a computer at the same time and need heavy multitasking. If you're looking for more than six cores or eight cores on the consumer platform, if you need a lot of PCI Express lanes, if you're doing compute that requires four video cards installed, for example, this is generally a much better platform to be on than, say, the X370 or Z370 from Intel or AMD. If all you care about is the fastest gaming CPU in the world, you just want to play games and use your computer like a normal consumer, the Z370 motherboard and the i7-8700K is going to be the better choice. It costs a bit less, it's a little bit faster than this when it comes to six core applications, and frankly, it's just easier to set up for most people. This is sort of the top one or two percent of the computing market. It costs a bit more, but you do get more for your money. Of course, talking about value for the money, I will mention Ryzen. Ryzen is incredible value for the money. It's not quite as fast as the Intel chips, but from a dollar to a performance point of view, how much you're spending versus what you're getting, I do highly recommend Ryzen, but that's a topic for another video. Now, there is Threadripper back there you can see behind me. That will be covered in a separate video, but I will talk a little bit about the differences between X299 and X399 in just a minute. If you are looking for quad channel RAM, if you are looking for multiple NVMe drives, three, four, five drives, yes, you can pigeonhole them into the consumer platforms, but they work properly on here. If you're looking for 10 gigabit ethernet networking or multiple linked networking, if you're looking for a lot of extra features such as that, more PCI Express lanes, four cards, as I mentioned, then the high-end platforms are where you wanna be, either X299 or X399. Everything I'm talking about in this video, from a high-end enthusiast point of view, all the applications you may run equally apply to Threadripper as they do to Skylake X. Now, one of the biggest questions people are going to ask is, what motherboard do I buy and what CPU do I buy? Let me talk about the motherboards first. I've got three different motherboards here at three slightly different price points. Not a lot. They range from about $300 retail price to about $400 retail price and in between. They are often on sale. Everything I'm talking about in this video will be linked down in the video description below to both Amazon and Newegg. Check current prices. There's often mail-in rebates and discounts. You may end up picking a board based simply on price because when it comes to these three boards, the features are very, very similar and they're all very nice options. Please let me be clear up front when I'm talking about these boards. I'm talking about them from the average user perspective, either using a large tower cooler or a closed loop all-in-one liquid cooler. If you want to overclock to the extreme max, if you're using a custom open loop cooler, liquid nitrogen or something like that, all of my comments regarding overclocking are not for you. I am looking at it from the ease of installation using off-the-shelf cooler point of view. The reality is, based upon my testing here, there's not a lot of difference between overclocking on these boards. They all have good power delivery. They all have good voltage regulators on them. Yes, you might get a one or 200 megahertz difference between various boards, but to some extent, that's luck of the draw, and it's also luck of the draw on your CPU if you plan to overclock. So if you want to hit a specific target, just keep in mind that your specific selection of motherboard matters less than, frankly, the luck of the draw on your CPU does. That brings us to CPU selection. Now there are KB Lake X chips, four core and four core eight thread. Please skip those, don't even consider them. Then you get to Skylake X, which starts out at six cores, 12 threads at the 7800X. For the most part, I would skip that CPU. It's out of the box, clock speed is lower. It's overclockable, but if you're gonna step up to the cost of these motherboards, go to quad channel RAM, I think you really wanna be at least eight cores. You might wanna be at 10. The i7-7820X, which is actually the CPU that I'm using right now, I'm recording this video on that computer as I speak, and I'll edit it and render the video on that as well, has 28 PCI Express lanes on the CPU, 24 on the chipset, which run through the chipset. So they're not quite the same thing, but they are still there for the uh, peripherals, devices, networking, etc. 
Once you step up above that CPU, then you go to the i9s. All of the i9s, starting at the i9-7900X, 10-core, 20-thread, have 44 PCI Express lanes on the CPU. If you want to install maybe more than three NVMe SSDs or more than two graphics cards, you really want to go to the i9 for the extra PCI Express lanes. Actual compute performance difference between the 8-core and the 10-core is not large. Uh, it's a 20% increase in cores for a fairly large price increase, going from $600 to $1,000. Although both CPUs have been on sale lately, again, those will be linked down below. Check current sales and deals, because if you can get one or the other for $100 off, it might change your decision. Having said that, let me be very straightforward and blunt. If you're thinking of going to an i9, I wouldn't buy the 7900X. It's fine, and if you get a great price on it, that's fine. But for only $200 more, you can step up to the i9-7920X, which is 12-core, 24-thread. By the time you've spent the money on the motherboard, the RAM, NVMe drives, video cards, the CPU, a high-end cooler, etc., another $200 shouldn't break the bank. And for that $200, you get straight 20% more cores, going from 10 to 12. Well, well, roughly 20%. Um, it's the same 44 PCI Express lanes, but if you're going to spend $1,000 on a CPU, 1200 is probably not going to break the bank. And I think it's actually a better value for the money for somebody who wants to step up above the i7-7820X. Now, there's also the 14-core 28-thread uh, chip, which is the i9-7940X, if I can remember the model numbers right. And it is $200 more at $1,400. That is also a very fair price. You're paying $200 more. You're getting two more cores. The 16-core chip, the 60X, has a $300 price jump. And for most people, that's probably not going to be worth it unless you really do make a lot of money with your computer. And then you have the $2,000 Beast, which frankly is expensive at $2,000 for 18 cores, 36 fre uh, threads. And that's the top dog tax. Nice, but yeah, skip it unless you have a specific need for all those cores and threads. Now, let me be absolutely clear. You really don't need these CPUs unless you make money with your computer. But if you make money with your computer, they might actually be quite reasonable. If your time is valuable, if rendering previews, if if you're working in Adobe Premiere Pro and you have a complicated timeline and you need to do previews quite a lot, a high-end video card or two, a high-end CPU might very well save you a few minutes here, a few minutes there. It all adds up over time. Over the course of owning these CPUs, I know a $1,000 or $1,200 CPU sounds like a lot, and for most of you, no, you shouldn't buy one. But if you should, it's worth considering that it doesn't take that much save time over the course of two or three years of owning one of these to pay for that very expensive CPU. Speaking of value for the money, now I use an i7-7820X 8-core 16-thread Skylake X CPU, and it's actually installed on that motherboard right now. Many people are going to ask and have asked me in the past, why not use Ryzen 7? Isn't Ryzen 7 a better value for the money? Yes, from a pure compute per price spent point of view, it is. It is true that the i7-7820X does render video faster than Ryzen 7. In fact, the Skylake X8 core chip is 25% faster in H.264 4K video render time than the Ryzen 7 1800X is. However, that's not why you do this. You do this for the 28 PCI Express lanes to the CPU. You do it for the quad channel RAM. You do it for the better multitasking. I have three NVMe solid state drives installed in my system. That would not be reasonable or even possible in most Ryzen or even Intel consumer level systems. There aren't enough PCI Express lanes available to do that properly. Yes, they can share through the chipset, but then they're all bottlenecked and slow. All three of those NVMe's are directly connected to my CPU. The quad channel RAM, I have 64 gigabytes of RAM in my system. I don't use 100% of it, but I do go over 50%, so I do need it. In this particular use case, editing and rendering for a living 4K video, Skylake X does make sense over Ryzen 7. Now, that use case is not most people. Most people who just do general stuff or maybe edit the occasional vacation video they shot with their iPhone or just play some games or do some general multitasking, yes, go buy a Ryzen 7. It is a better deal. But for professional users, that's what this is for. No conversation of X299 would be complete without discussing Threadripper and X399. Short version, $1,000, 16 cores, 32 threads. From a pure price to performance point of view, this is a better value for the money than Intel. 
However, there are certain applications and programs that just work better on Intel chips. Intel also has the benefit of AVX512, which Ryzen and Threadripper do not currently have. If you do H.265 encoding, the 10-core 20-thread i9-7900X is faster by up to 20% than the 16-core 32-thread Threadripper 1950X. However, in H.264, 4K video encoding, the Threadripper is about 20% faster than the i9-7900X. Both C uh, CPUs are about $1,000, and the motherboards are similar prices as well, although the X299s are slightly less expensive. So if you want H.264 encoding, if you have a use for 16 threads and don't care about AVX512 or some of the other Intel-specific features, Ryzen and Threadripper might make a whole lot of sense. However, it is worth noting that Threadripper has 64 PCI Express lanes on all the Threadripper CPUs. I don't actually recommend the lower end Threadripper chips. I don't think price to performance it makes sense. Once you spend the money on those boards, I think the 16 core makes sense. You save $200 by going down to the 12 core chip, but that $200, by the time you bought all these other components, I think if you're going Threadripper, you just go to the 1950X, but that's a topic for Threadripper's review. The 64 PCI Express lanes are broken down, four for the chipset, 60 for the CPU. Please note, i9-7900X, 44 PCI Express lanes to the CPU, 24 to the chipset. So yes, this does have more CPU PCI Express lanes, but it has fewer chipset lanes. That's kind of a give and take. It's a trade-off. Which one works for you depends upon what you need. If you have more peripherals, components, network cards that aren't being 100% utilized, then actually Skylake X's PCI Express lane makes more sense. Are you installing four video cards or 10 NVMe drives that will be used on a continuous basis for compute? You might want the 60 PCI Express lanes on the X399 Threadripper. Last point on Threadripper, the clock speed is a bit lower than most of the Skylake X chips. My i7-7820X out of the box turbos to 4 GHz on all 8 cores and turbo boosts to up to 4.5, but it easily overclocks to 4.5 on all the cores and it will run at 4.7 if you are tolerant of heat and noise and don't care too much about the voltage. I don't actually recommend that. I think 4.5 is the comfortable sweet spot for all 8 cores. Now the i9-7900X, 4.4 gigahertz on all 10 cores. You give about 100 megahertz trade-off and that's a pretty comfortable place for that CPU. Anything over that and temp and noise and voltage become a little bit silly. Same thing with Threadripper. Yes, it XFRs out of the box to up to 4.2, but that's not on all 16 cores. 4 gigahertz on all 16 cores is doable on, on open lo uh, loop custom coolers. But it's challenging. A lot of people don't achieve that. 3.8, 3.9 is about the most you're going to get. If your application is not 100% multi-threaded, if you don't need the 16 cores, you may find that 10 cores, like video encoding, for example, you may find that 10 cores at 4.4 are actually faster than 16 at 3.9, just based upon your workload if you need faster cores rather than more of them. Coming back to motherboard selection really quickly, let me talk about a couple of things to think about. First of all, each of these companies makes multiple boards with the X299 chipset, ranging from anywhere from $200 to $500 on up in price. Most of these boards do require two CPU power connectors, either two 8-pin or one 4-pin and one 8-pin. Now, actually, some boards are optional on the second connector. If you run the CPUs at stock speed, you only need one of them. But if you run the CPU overclock, that's where you might need both of them. But if you're spending this kind of money, you really should have a premium power supply that has two 8-pin connectors. If you don't, budget a power supply replacement. The number of SATA ports can also be different. The X299 Tai Chi, for example, has 10 of them, whereas these two boards each have eight. The number of M.2 PCI Express NVMe slots is also different. The Gigabyte and the Tai Chi each have three. This MSI board only has two. I mentioned that this is the board that I'm using. This is how I have three installed. These are about $20 or so. Um, it gives you two M.2 slots, one for NVMe devices in the 4X PCI Express slot, and then one for a SATA with a cable plugged in. And I do have that. If you watch my build video, you saw me use that when I put the Skylake X together. Now that's, of course, you can use this in any of these boards. If you've got one of the 44 PCI Express Lane i9s, you could use one or even two of these to add up to five, for example, NVMe devices to the Gigabyte or to the Tai Chi. 
Now, there are a lot of different boards, and I cannot possibly cover all of them. Let me just say this. Spend more, get more. The networking port, does it have one gigabit or 10 gigabit? Does it have multiple that you can team together? What is the audio solution included? How many extra USB ports? Does it have an extra chip for even more ports on it? Does it have lots of RGB lighting such as this gigabyte? If you want lots of RGB lighting, let me tell you, gigabyte is doing RGB right. These things are absolutely gorgeous when they're lit up. On the other hand, do you want less RGB lighting? That has a little bit, not much. If you want basically a muted quiet system, you might want to consider the Tai Chi. The reality is these are all very quality boards. They're all going to do the job just fine. It really comes down to preference, features, ports, price, and just ultimately just personal style differences. Finally, in conclusion, let me just re-emphasize that 99% of you out there are much better off with the i7-8700K or one of the Ryzen 7 CPUs than either X299 or X399. These are high-end platforms for enthusiasts. If you've got the money and you just want a premium experience, they are great and they work very, very well but they are not the winners when it comes to a pure price to performance ratio. That would be these depending upon what you need and of course those are reviews for another time. Like this video if you like it, share it with your friends if you loved it. Remember to subscribe to my channel with the big huge red button directly below. Questions and comments in the comment section and please check out the links in the video description. If you found this interesting, helpful and informative, please use those links when you're shopping. They are affiliate links, they do support the channel and I would really appreciate it if you could do so. Thank you so much, I will see you in the next video.